Good morning, MS Gym family. What is going on? How are you guys doing? Um, hey, I know I'm a little bit later than typical Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Uh, my uh, schedule is going to be changing a little bit, so I'm going to be shifting to a little bit of a later filming time. Uh, I'll put that up in the Facebook group. Um, put, put that up in the Facebook group today once I determine kind of what that is. I mean, as usual, my schedule is kind of crazy, so uh, have patience and grace with me as we kind of shift, uh, trying to figure out what's the best rhythm and flow for me to get uh, my exercise time in, my like my my reflection and my quiet time in, and also uh, to get my mind right to fully be with you guys as much as possible. Um, I'm finding myself. I'm going to be honest. I'm finding myself rushing around a lot, just trying to just get things done. And I don't want to do that, man. The MS Gym is way too special. You guys are way too special. I want to give you my full attention, and uh, that happens after when I'm when I am exercising consistently. I'm having quiet time with myself to reflect and get my spirit right, and uh, and really to be with you guys. So I appreciate your patience. It's not going to be a huge swing, but uh, I'll kind of think about it throughout the rest of the day. So that's uh, that's our announcement for the MS Gym. So um, if you are new here. Welcome. We let a lot of people in. Uh, a lot of people joined yesterday from all over the world. I think we hit up Slovenia. We hit up Israel. We hit up, uh, what was the other one? I can't remember what the other one was, but there was a third big one. Um, oh, Norway. We got a bunch of people in from Norway too. So welcome to all you guys. Now, if you're new to the MS Gym, I just want to let you know that this is the place that you need to be. And this is your last stop in trying to figure out what exercises to do best with MS. Every single exercise that we do in here, I think about and I, I've used with my MS clients, my stroke clients, my Parkinson's clients, my brain injury clients, all of my neuro people to really start retraining the brain how to work around the damage that has been done to it. So with MS, we're working around the lesions in the brain, the demyelination in the body and really getting uh, you moving again, balancing again, being just feeling strong again and all that kind of fun stuff because every single exercise is designed to work around the MS damage. So the other thing about these exercises is they're an amazing complement to your physical therapy, your physio, your, car, or your uh, chiropractic, your physician, your nutritionist, your Pilates, your yoga, whatever you're doing. This is the strength training that you need to do. This is the balance training you need to do. This is retraining your body to, to add in and complement and give you an amazing a way of fighting back against your MS, all right? So I've had so much confirmation that these exercises are the perfect complement to everything that I just listed, okay? So this week, what we're talking about are key, this is a key exercise series, an MS key exercise. The key exercise that we're talking about is pelvic tilting. Pelvic tilting is necessary for you to walk well, balance well, stand upright, have good posture, not fall over, get up out of your chair, walk without a cane, walk without a walker, um, live an independent life. You need to be able to tip your pelvis back, all right? Because a lot of times what happens with MS is that if this is your pelvis, we tip forward. And when we tip forward like this, the hips tip forward, it shoves our body weight down into our feet, it exacerbates spasticity, it, it exacerbates or increases foot drop, it uh, prevents you from actually lifting your legs. So when your hips, if these are your hips and they tip forward like this, we got a problem, okay? So our goal is to get them to tip back into what's called neutral pelvis or neutral spine so that everything's aligned properly so that we can walk well. Now, day one, we talked about uh, pelvic tilts on our back and combine that with hip extension through a hip bridge. Day two, we talked about uh, supine pelvic tilting with our legs up um, in a 90 degree. So we talked about uh, breathing with that and we talked about hip flexion uh, with those leg lifts that we did yesterday. And now today, what we're gonna be focusing on is a sideline pelvic tilt with what's called a clamshell because we need to work on internal rotation. Now the reason why, I'm, I, I like clamshells but it needs to be complemented with other stuff. I like clamshells for the, for, for, the, for the fact that a lot of times with MS, and forgive me for not completely standing up, but a lot of times with MS, these adductors get really, really tight. The groin gets really, really tight, and it causes our legs to do this. If our legs internally rotate like this and our hips internally rotate like this, you're not going to be able to stand up. 
So you, a lot of you saw that video of Donna yesterday, and when we got her glutes to actually fire and her legs to come apart like that, boom, she stood up and she could stand up out of a chair. When she came in last Monday, it wasn't happening. So we released a lot of the adductors. We worked on the abductors or the, the muscles that actually rotate our hips back out so you can actually stand properly, all right? So this exercise with the clamshell and the pelvic tilt is super key for you before you go to bed, when you get up. Uh, a lot of us are sideline sleepers, and so if you don't have positive tonicity in these muscles on the outside right here, your legs are just going to collapse all night. So this is going to help you have passive tone or involuntary tone um, while you sleep and while your body holds itself, okay? So let's get started. Now, you can use one of two things here. You can use a squeezy ball or you can use a rolled up towel. These are a stack of towels here at the at our rise movement solutions but we're going to use this too all right so you can use either one so we're going to do a sideline pelvic tilt and then go into a clamshell now we're going to do both sides so we're going to do a set of pelvic tilts and a set of clamshells on both sides so if you are using the squeezy ball I'm a, i like that it's a better illustration on film so it's a little bit wider but you can also do this with towels okay not a big deal so what you're going to do here is you're going to lie on your side now, the key things here are you've got to get your feet together. You've got to get your knees so they're pretty even as much as you can. And I want you to try to get your hips stacked. When I say stacked, that means you don't want to be falling back. You don't want to be falling forward. If you see this top knee ahead of the bottom, you're not stacked. If you see these two knees relatively even, you're stacked. Now, if you have foot drop and this happens down at your feet, don't worry about it. I don't want a bunch of comments being like, I can't get my foot to drop. I don't understand. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's ideal if you can pull your feet up like this just because it inhibits some of the muscles that pull our hips down and we're trying to get our hips up. But please don't let that interfere with what you're doing on this exercise. So you are going to lie on your side, okay? Um, and you're going to just hold your hands like this. Now, I want you to pull your abs in. You're going to stack your hips. You're gonna pull your shoulder blades down, right? So we're still going butts, guts, and blades, right? So we got blades down, guts in, and we're gonna be using the butt. But what you're gonna be doing here is I want your hand on your hip. You're gonna be just lying down on your hand like this. Make sure your body is as straight as you can get. If you need to put your back against the wall, do it. And then you're just gonna pelvic tilt. So you're gonna pull those abs in, you're gonna pull that pelvic floor up, and you are going to tip your pelvis back. So you're gonna give a light squeeze down on the ball, and you're just gonna tip your pelvis back without rounding your spine. So I don't wanna see the middle of your back all humped up. I want it straight and relaxed, and you're just gonna tip your pelvis back. So we're just gonna tip our pelvis back and hold that. That's a one, two, and back. Abs are in, pelvic floor up, tip back. Two, two, and good. And tip back, three, two. Hold those abs in, go back to neutral with your pelvis. Watch my hand, what it does. Four. Two, so I'm tipping my pelvis back. I'm, I'm, help, I'm using my hand to guide my hips. Okay, abs are in, and go. Five, two, back down. Six, two, back down. Let that head relax. Don't get your neck involved. Seven, two, it's all from right here. Abs are in, pelvic floor up, go. Eight, two, good. Nine, two, good. Last one, 10, and two. All right. So now we are going to clamshell, but you're going to be, so you're going to be lifting this leg up. But what I want you to do is before you do anything, this looks kind of weird on camera, but I don't really care. So you're going to kind of reach in and I want you as much as you can to kind of re reduce or uh, rub out this groin area. Okay. So I want you to rub those adductors, especially up in the groin, like real, real high. Okay. So you're going to rub those adductors out for about 30 seconds. A lot of you guys have spasm in this. You may actually even want to re remove or uh, sorry, release or massage those adductors before you even lie on your side. So you can actually roll on your back and then just work on removing that adductor. Okay. Because if those go into spasm when you're lying on your side, you're not going to be able to do a good pelvic tilt or a clamshell. So uh, let's do it that way. Let's massage first and then we'll go pelvic tilt and then we'll go, uh, then we'll go clamshell. So I'll do it better on the other side. So we massage that out for about 30 seconds. Grab your ball again. Now what I would do is that if you have a stack of towels for this, that might be a little bit better because as you lift your leg up, you don't, <laughs> you don't want the ball to roll away. Okay. So we're going to set you right there, little buddy. 
So we're going to be this way. So the thing is, I want a stack of towels between your legs because I don't want you to fall all the way over. A lot of you guys have that kind of falling hip thing in your hip subluxes. So I want you in a neutral position so that you can actually lift. So I want a pretty thick stack of uh, towels or a pillow or a cushion so that your legs are staying kind of neutral instead of falling over and collapsing like this. So I want abs in. I want your pelvis tip back. I want your legs kind of at uh, a 90 is going to be pretty tough. So drop them down just a little bit. And then what you're going to do is abs are in and you're going to use this muscle on the back side of your glute to go ahead and just, you're going to lift your knee open. So you're just going to do that. It's a very small motion. Do not arch your back. So abs are in and then you come back down. It's a small motion. Your feet stay in contact with each other and you just open that knee up and you're focusing on these hip muscles back here and bring it back down. All right. So let's hit 10. So it's a one, two back down. Notice my, my hips are stacked. My abs are in my pelvic floor is up. I'm tipped back in my pelvis. Do not let your hips tip forward or you'll be working the wrong muscle and back down. So you've got to maintain that pelvic tilt as you do this, the entire set. So hold the abs in, hold the pelvic tilt back and back down. Don't let it go at the bottom. So your abs are still in, you're still tilted. So that's a three, two. I just had a bug fly in my face. <laughs> back down, touch the towel and up four, two. Now when you come down and touch that towel, it's just a light touch. Don't relax in between every rep. Five, two, back down, focusing up here on those external rotators of the hip. Six, Two, this will also help with that hyperextension in your knee. Seven, two, so those of you who take a step and your knee buckles backwards, this will help because you're externally rotating the hip. That's eight, back down. Nine, two, and notice I don't go very high. It's just that you're just initiating that motion. And 10, and two, good, and back down. Okay, so let's slowly switch sides. Okay, let me make sure my sound is on. I will try this for sure. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go to the other side. Okay. So let's just do it with the stack of towels this time just to make it easy or a cushion so you don't have to move as much. So now on the pelvic tilt, I do want you up at 90. So your legs are a little bit higher on the pelvic tilt. So your head is down. Just chill out. Relax. Okay. You're going to have a slight push into those towels. Knees are stacked. So try to get up to 90 as much as you can. Okay. Abs are in pelvic floor up and we're going to pelvic tilt. Okay. I'm trying not to yell into the microphone here. So I'm turning my head away. I want your heads like straight ahead like this, but that's just a lot with speaking to the microphone. All right. So ready? Use your hand to guide you pelvic tilt and go. So it's a one, two and back down two, two and back down. So you're tipping your pelvis back. Use your hand to guide you. Three, two, back down. Four, two, back down. Five, two, abs are in, pelvic floor is up the entire set. Six, two, think about just tucking your tail. Seven, two, back to neutral. Up, eight, two, back down. Nine, two, use these muscles in your trunk. Ten, and two. Good job. Now from 90 degrees here, let your legs kind of move your, move your feet back a little bit. Okay. Now abs are in pelvic floor is up. Shoulder blades are nice and relaxed and we clamshell. Okay. So you're using this hip, the upper glute on the back side. Okay. Ready? <clears throat> and let's go. So it's a one, two, back down, two, two, back down right up here on that hip. Three, two, back down. Remember, don't collapse into the towel. Four, two, come down. Barely touch. Keep those abs in and that pelvic floor up and that hip, those pelvis tip back. Five, two, back down. Six, two, back down. Seven, two, back down. Eight, two, back down. Nine, two, back down. Last one, 10, two, and back down. Woo, kind of feel that, man. All right, good, that's good stuff. All right, so does that make sense? <laughs> so when you're doing your pelvic tilts, your legs are at 90 degrees, okay? Meaning that your legs are at 90 degrees here when you're doing your, just your pelvic tilts, boom, boom, boom. When you're doing those clamshells, drop them down to about 45 degrees because it's a better angle for the muscles that are actually in the, in the hip called your deep 
external rotators okay all right you guys so that is that is day three so we've done pelvic tilts on our back plus hip extension pelvic tilts on our back plus hip flexion now we have pelvic tilts on our side plus hip external rotation okay the next two days are going to be kind of putting this all together and showing you how to actually use this stuff when you're on your feet when you are balancing all that kind of fun stuff. So we're gonna get up on our feet the next couple days, we're gonna integrate this the next couple days, and we're gonna really help you start to make that connection between pelvic tilting and walking, which is gonna help you lift your leg better, avoid foot shuffle, foot drop, foot fall, knee hyperextension, okay? Um, all of these exercises help with that. I've been getting a ton of people asking about knees hyperextending. It's because your glutes are weak, and your internal rotators are over dominant. So your internal rotators are dominant, your hips are weak, right? And so it causes your, your knee to just buckle out. Well, if we work on glutes here, re reducing spasticity in the adductor, working on the glutes, your hips open up like this, and then they can't hyperextend. It becomes a biomechanical, a virtual impossibility. There's always, <laughs> the body always finds a way to do things, but a, a lot of you people will have those hyperextended knees fixed by a lot of the stuff that we're doing this week. All right, so I love you guys. Thank you so much. If you like this video, hit like, comment away down below. Keep uh, helping out the newbies that are in here. Uh, I'm gonna try to throw up some of those free program graphics for all you new people. So if you're brand new to the MS Gym, look over the next couple days. I'm gonna give you links to all of the free programs. These are the best, those are the best places to start uh, to do every single day, uh, along with these exercises that you are doing in the Facebook group, all right? So you guys are awesome. I love hanging out with you. You are my family, you are my tribe. I woke up today with such a grateful heart for every single one of you, and uh, I can't believe that this is, this is the direction that Misty's in my life is going with all of you. So from the bottom of our heart, thank you. So much gratitude, so much blessing here. We love you all, and thank you so much. Have a good day.